Greetings, my name is Louise Dente, and I welcome you to yet another edition of Cultural Caravan. On this edition is a special, because we're joined by Dr. Molana Karinga. He is the, a professor and chair of the Department of Africana Studies at California State University, Long Beach. He is the chair of US and the National Association of Kawaita Organizations. He is the executive director of the African American Cultural Center and Kawaita Institute of Pan-African Studies. Dr. Karinga is also co-chair of the Black Community Co Clergy and Labor Alliance. Dr. Karinga is also the author of numerous scholarly articles and books, including Kawaita and Questions of Life and Struggle, Mayat, The Moral Ideal in Ancient Egypt, a study in classical African ethics, selections from the Husea, sacred wisdom of ancient Egypt, introduction to Black Studies, fourth edition. Dr. Karinga is the creator of the Pan-African cultural holiday, Kwanzaa, and the Nguzu Saba, the seven principles, and author of the authoritative text entitled Kwanzaa, a celebration of family, community and culture. Without further ado, we invite Dr. Milana Karinga to Cultural Caravan. Welcome. Thank you so much and thanks for the invitation. I really appreciate uh, being here. Uh, Ms. Louis Dente, thanks so much uh, for, uh, um, for the opportunity to participate and to reaffirm the importance of Cultural Caravan. And so thank you for your ye years of work. Uh, in maintaining our culture and bringing uh, on your program, people that reaffirm the importance of culture. This is how we started out. We started out as an organization that following the teachings of Malcolm, who said, if we're going to ever break the bonds of white supremacy, we must recapture our culture. And even if we don't go back to Africa physically, we must go back philosophically and psychologically. We must learn its values. We must incorporate in our understanding of the world its best visions. And we must use this to ground ourselves or in ourselves and direct our life toward good and expansive end. And that's been our mission for 56 years and 224 seasons. We celebrate September the 7th this year. In our year, 6205 uh, to 6261, and in the other years, 1965 to 2021. Mm -hmm. So when people think about, and, and thank you very much for the clarification, if I understand you correctly, when people think about um, 56 years is a pretty long time, it's a lifetime, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, what inspired you to formulate the organization, US? Yeah, well, appreciate what you said, if I understand correctly. In 65, I was at UCLA finishing my doctorate. I was working on my doctorate. I left it to join the movement because there was a question of, what am I getting all this knowledge for? And Mary McLeod Bethune has said, knowledge is the prime need of the hour, but people, will want to know what you are going to do with your knowledge. And she said, it's up for us who have knowledge to discover the dawn and then share it with our youth and the masses of our people who need it more. She said, we're making so many strides in science, but the knowledge is not reaching the masses in the way that it is. She wanted us to become self-conscious agents of our own life and liberation to imagine a whole new world and to build that world in our own image and interest, our world, and to work with other people and build in the larger world. So that's what inspired me to come out. The movement was rising and I wanted to be a part of the movement, the struggle to free ourselves and to be ourselves. And whereas most of the time we talk about the Black Freedom Movement. And when I say the Black Freedom Movement, I mean two phases of that movement the civil rights phase and the black power phase. Usually people try to collapse the black freedom movement to just the civil rights phase of it. But no, 
there's a larger movement, a black freedom movement that started when we got here, right? And it continues. But the one, the modern one was from 1955 to 1975. And in that, from 55 to 65 is the civil rights phase. And from six, uh, 65 to 75 is the black power phase. So I come into being, I do some work in the civil rights phase, but I come into my own in the black power phase. And I argue then as now, that as a dual struggle that we wait, a struggle to free ourselves and to be ourselves. And then we said, we can't really be ourselves until we free ourselves, but we can't free ourselves unless we go on and be ourselves, right? You can't free yourself as a black person if you keep saying you're black, it's a mix or some other kind of thing. You got to focus on who you are first. What is your primary identity? And if you have a primary identity, it's not your color. You could be dark or light. There's some dark white people, right? And there's some light black people. Hey, that's not, we, we didn't even have this conversation once, right? The conversation is how do you claim? What are you culturally grounded in? And this culture is what a person is. And so that's what it came to me in terms of arguing that until we break the monopoly uh, that the oppressor has on so many of our minds, liberation is not only impossible, it's unthinkable. And what you can't conceive, you can't achieve. So you have had lifted us out of our own history and made us a footnote and forgotten casualty in theirs. And so what happens is our liberation struggle is as Cabra, Emeka Cabra said, it is to return to our own history and culture, right? And so we can do what? Speak our own special culture truth and make our own unique contribution to the forward flow of human history and especially to the reconception, the radical reconception of what America means and the radical reconstruction of it. Not only must we reconceive it in radical ways, we must reconstruct it in equally radical ways. Well, thank you. I appreciate what you said, if I understand you correctly. And so in terms of that foundation, we know in 1966, you developed a very powerful holiday, um, one of its kind with it for Africans and Americans throughout the world, which is the Kwanzaa holiday. Tell us about that. What inspired the development of this holiday that is celebrated throughout the world? It's so important. It's a very important initiative. So that's another way I want to bring my knowledge of African, African culture, continental and the aspirin ancient and modern, to put that in a holiday, right? And so what I wanted to do, keep in mind now, I created Kwanzaa in the midst of two projects going on, to free ourselves and to be ourselves. So I reached back all the way to Africa at the beginning of time when humans first stood up, spoke the first human truth. That's us. We're the fathers and mothers of humanity, the elders of humanity, right? We stood up first and spoke that person truth, first uh, uh, truth first human truth. And guess what? We introduced some of the basic disciplines of human knowledge in the Nile Valley. We taught Jew, Gentile, Hittite, Hitchell, Roman, Greek, Persian, Libyan, they all came uh, to um, uh, Africa to learn, right? But as Diop said, the Europeans restructured that so that we didn't even know what we had done. It's like one of those science fiction movies on a planet called Talos, where they can make you <laughs> not believe, make you believe you haven't done what you did, right? And so they erase your mind, cause historical amnesia. So the question was, what am I going to do? Uh, was following again, Dr. Bethu, what am I going to do with my knowledge? And so what I wanted to do is I, I built my organization, I, I continued to develop my philosophy, Kawita, and out of that philosophy, and I would like to define Kawita as an ongoing synthesis of the best of African thought and practice in constant exchange with the world. So it is a liberational philosophy forged and formed in the struggles of the 60s. And so I'm saying, what can I contribute? So before I create Kwanzaa, I create the seven principles, which are the hub and hinge on which the holiday turns. And I create Kwanzaa for three basic reasons. One, to reaffirm our rootedness in African culture, that we are an African people, right? We might not know it, we might not fully understand it, 
but we've got to struggle to be who we are. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Second, I created uh, uh, Kwanzaa in order to return us to our history and culture as a means to return us to our history and culture through struggle, right? And so Kwanzaa becomes an act of freedom, an instrument of freedom, and a celebration of freedom all at once. It's an act of freedom because it breaks from the dominant culture of the European. We don't ask permission to have our holiday. We don't, we don't go anywhere and petition the city government, the county government, the federal government, the state government to recognize us. We declare ourselves and we practice it. And African people embrace it all over the world. So we are returning, as Cabral said, to our own history and culture because without that, we can't free ourselves. Again, if we don't be ourselves, we can't free ourselves. But we can't fully be ourselves until we fully free ourselves. So the third reason I created uh, Kwanzaa was in fact uh, to um, <clears throat> give us a time when we as African people, and you got to collect those first two, but the next reason is uh, to give us a time when we as African people all over the world could come together, reaffirm the bonds between us and meditate on the awesome meaning of being African in the world. What does it mean to be the fathers and mothers of humanity and human civilization? What does it mean to be the sons and daughters of the Holocaust of enslavement? What does it mean to be the authors and heirs of our reaffirmation of our Africanness and our culture of struggle and social justice tradition in the 60s? What does all that mean? And you know, more than any other time, Africans all over the world, on every continent in the world, throughout the world African community, take this moment in time and think about and celebrate being African in the world. And so that's a beautiful thing to see how Africans all over the world, millions and millions of Africans throughout the world African community on every continent in the world come together around this idea. And then finally, I created Kwanzaa in order to introduce and reaffirm the importance of communitarian African values, values that stress and strengthen family, community, and culture. And that's what I define Kwanzaa as a celebration of family, community, and culture. And at the heart of Kwanzaa as a seven-day holiday are the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles, right? They are community and values. They teach us the importance of relationship, relationality, right? That we are in terms of how we relate, right? That we come into being in relationship, right? We're in relationship before we're born. We're in relationship with our ancestors. We're in relationship with our mothers and fathers. We're in a relationship with our siblings and with those that exist. And we're in relationship to those who will come after us. That's African conception. And so the Nguzo Saba is introduced through Kwanzaa. I create Kwanzaa to introduce these values also, in addition to the other reasons I gave, right? And to, by extension, talk about other collective, communitarian African values, values that stress and strengthen family, community, and culture. And of course, those seven principles are first in Swahili and then in English, Umoja, unity, Kujichagulia, self-determination. Ujima, collective working responsibility. Ujima, cooperative economic. Nia, purpose. Kuumba, creativity. And Imani, faith. One of the things that I've told people is that the seven principles, as I know that you've said millions of times, are not just focused on those days, the seven last seven days of the year, but it's supposed to be practiced throughout. And how do you... How do we get our people to understand that, you know, not to turn Kwanzaa into a ceremony, but to also adopt it into our regular life, which is the intention. What do you feel that we could be doing right now to really, when we talk about the seven principles at this day and this hour that we live in, when there's a major pandemic, um, how do you feel we can embrace the seven principles even at this time? and especially at this time. Well, the first and most important thing uh, for us to do 
is to in fact learn the principles and their meaning. You can always add to what you want to approach it with, but first get the core meaning because that's our common ground. It's like Christians doing the seven, doing the ten, ten commandment, right? You can in interpret how you want to, but you got to first get the explanation that's given you, right? And so, when we when we say we know the seven principles, can we say that Umoja unity to strive for and maintain unity in a family, community, nation, and race? So, right there, if you're asking how to practice it, the first one is unity. Without unity, we can't do anything. It's no accident that I put Umoja first and Imani last, because without unity. We can't have family, we can't have friendship, we can't have sisterhood, we can't have brotherhood, we can't have community. What can we have without unity? We just be by ourselves, right? So we are a combination of relationships that give us ground, right? That help us to anchor ourselves and direct our lives toward good and expansive end. So we have to do that. We have to strive for unity in our family. And it has to be a purposeful and, and principled unity. You have no obligation to unify with people who are abusing you or people who are just negative, right? But you must struggle with them gently and not antagonistically within your family or within your community, right? So there's a levels of, of, of struggle there. Before we say first, the family, the community, the nation, and your race, right? That's the world African community as Garvey defined it. That Donovan Marcus Garvey. Second, could you try to live? Self-determination to define ourselves, to name ourselves, to create for ourselves, and to speak for ourselves. So who are you among men and women? How, who are you? Who, who are you in the midst of your community? Who are you in your everyday practices? We bring ourselves into being by what we think and practice. It's not just that how we think determines how we practice. It's how we, how, who we are. It's how we think and practice what we think are our best values that bring us into being in the way that we should be. Uchima, collect. Oh, 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 so I, I'm just telling you, you can go down. I see you want to uh, go to another point, but if people would learn those things, how many people can say those, right? How many people can actually say what it means and then add some description? Because in every definition is a practice. Those are action verbs in every one of those principles, right? And it's always a stress on what? Striving and struggle. Yes, definitely. And I appreciate you clarifying that. One of the things that, you know, with the remaining time for this segment, um, you is there going to be a celebration or an activity, an event to commemorate the 56th anniversary of us that the audience might be interested in participating? And if yes. so? Well, today I'm lecturing, um, I'm giving the, uh, uh, elect, uh, lecture on um, us in the storms of history. Uh, pardon me, us steadfast in the storms of history, 56 years and 224 seasons of struggle. And so if you want, it's at three o'clock, you know, you can uh, call in to get the information. Segun so, has it and we sent it out. So it's there. Um, on the internet, it's posted. You can go to our um, uh, website, us-organization.org, get the information on our African American Culture Center. Us, uh, you can get it there, uh, Af African American Culture Center, LA. Uh, so that's what we're going to do, and we're going to celebrate the whole year, right? All this month and the whole year, because that's how we take it. Because it gives us a chance to be conscious all year about what do we to be. You mentioned the celebration is year round. And um, at the time of this taping, people will probably not see the taping for another week, but they can go to your website. If you could share with us your website um, in terms of how people can see some of the archived programs, as well as some of the, you have weekly opportunities, right? For people to connect. Yeah. So if you could share that information, that'd be wonderful. So, uh, yes, every week we have what we call soul session. For 56 years, we've been having this at three o'clock, same time, all the time, right? So, and then we have lecture. Usually I lecture, but in a special time like this, 
We also have guest lectures and we have panels put together like next week by members of the organization. So they're gonna talk about commemoration and us commemoration and celebration 56 years and 224 uh, years of work, service, struggle, and institute, 250, 224 seasons. And the way we get the season is that four seasons in every year. So it's not only 56 years, but 224 seasons of work, service, struggle, and institution building. To talk about how we have uh, practiced these in these 56 years and 224 seasons. Every year. So the website is the one I gave you. Um, us organization.org, us organization.org, African American Culture Center LA, and also official Kwanzaa website.org, official Kwanzaa website.org. So those three, you can get the information. Now, just so but I said, please go to the Kwanzaa website. Don't assume, this is one thing you asked me about how people can do more. They can stop getting shortcuts to their culture. Go to the source, right? <laughs> What's the purpose of having uh, uh, someone here who has done this and knows it and borrowing from and building on that and making it in your own interpretation, but maintaining the integrity and beauty of the holiday, always the integrity and beauty of the holiday. Now, I appreciate you sharing that. And I just want to let our, our viewers know that you're on the West Coast. So three o'clock um, West Coast time is for us here in New York, six o'clock uh, yes. for those on the East Coast. So um, I would definitely, I just want to make sure people catch up. And, and the beauty of this, and we have to thank you, Dr. Karenga, because you're actually providing an opportunity for people to understand from your lips, from your mouth to their ears, rather than misinterpretations, which you and I know have caused a lot of confusion. So, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity for our listeners to really hear it from the source. You know, you've took, you've created some, some, some legendary works is in the books to let people know what the holiday is about, what culture is about in terms of defining it and so forth. And even in terms of the Husea, which is an ancient text, um, which is actually from Kemet. Um, so, so, you know, there's so much. Um, and I know that if somebody visits your website, they can also access a lot of your works uh, are there. Uh, so we really want to encourage our viewers to really take advantage of the opportunity to hear it from a scholar, a renowned scholar, who's really given left a legacy, has a legacy for us for generations uh, to celebrate, to build upon. And to really, it's really an opportunity for people of African ancestry to reclaim our Africanness. Because as you know, uh, because of white supremacy, a lot of people moved away from Africa. Africa was not considered the, a, a good place. But um, the bottom line is embracing Kwanzaa has actually brought a lot of our people together. Uh, people in the Caribbean, people in Africa, who you know, around this holiday. In, in Latin America, in Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, all over Latin America. And as I said, on every continent. And we were so surprised that we had, saw some Inuit, afro Inuit people were celebrating Kwanzaa up in northern uh, Canada in Inuit land, right? So I'm just, I'm just saying that this has united us in a way nothing else. It's a Pan-African initiative. It brings us together on solid ground in the way that the Honorable Marcus Garvey wanted it to be, uh, Haji Minister Malcolm X also, and other uh, people who had fought uh, for us to understand ourselves, to appreciate ourselves, to think about ourselves in dignity affirming, life enhancing and world preserving ways. So I'm so glad uh, that we have this opportunity to talk about this because it's very important for us to share our culture and to build on the best of what it means to be African and human in the fullest sense of the word. Well, you know, Dr. Uh, Karinga, I just wanna say on behalf of Cultural Caravan, we salute you, your work and your wonderful wife, Tia Moyo, uh, who for 
decades of your commitment to our community for leaving, for providing us with an opportunity to celebrate ourselves and for generations to come. And I encourage each and every one of the audience to seek out the work, to tune in to your website, to really find out directly from your lips to their ears what culture is. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. And, and, and we look forward to having you back very, very soon. So with that said, I want to thank you. And I want to tell my guests, um, I hope you've enjoyed our broadcast. And we continue to encourage you to tune in, to write, and to tell a friend. And uh, please visit our website at www.ccptv.org. But until next time, Louise Dente saying thank you. If you would like to support these broadcasts, we encourage you to send contributions to P.O. Box 300-851, Jamaica, New York, 11430. Thank you.